At any given moment, the stock market in a short run is a voting machine. In the long run, it's a weighing machine. So what does that mean? It means that when you look at stocks over a short period of time, let's pull up the S&P 500 as an example. This is the last year. This is the last five years. This is this data going back to 1993. This is year to date. This is six months. In short periods of time, the market is going to be irrational. In the short run, what's going to matter is people's emotions, people's reaction to Mr. Market. If people are excited and a lot of good data comes out, makes them feel euphoric, they're going to put more money into stocks and it's going to drive up stock prices. The exact opposite happens when things are scary. Let's look at one of the scariest events of, of our time. That is COVID right there. People thought the entire world was, gonna, was shutting down, which it did. And people thought this is only going to be bad for a very long period of time. Now, I want you to remember, at this point right here, I believe there were 5,000 COVID cases in the United States of America. At the bottom of the market, we've had, by this point, hundreds of millions, if not billions of COVID cases. So clearly, this was not the rationale. It doesn't make any sense to me. But people's fear was all consuming here. And then when they realized, oh, wait, we're getting tons of checks. Great. All is good in this world. But over long periods of time, stocks are a weighing machine. What does that mean? It means that over long periods of time, the fundamentals of the stock market and individual companies is what's going to win out in the long run. Let's look at 2000. In 2000, things were euphoric. At the peak of the 2000 bubble, we had the S&P at roughly SPY at 147 in March of 2000. 23 years later. So let's see what the kind of return that is, not including dividends. Divided by 145 to the power of one divided by 23. 4.55%, not including dividends. Now, back here, there were many people who thought the stock market was going to go up 18% a year for the rest of the time. Without dividends, it went up 4.55%. Dividends since then have averaged at low twos. So overall, we're looking at 6.5 to 7% per year returns over a 23 year period. If I told you back here that that's what would have happened, you would have said, you're crazy, you're stupid, stocks are gonna go up 10, 15, 20% a year the rest of the time. But in the weighing machine, you overpaid here and it took you a long time to recover. And on top of that guys, where are we today? Are we at reasonable values? So that question is the one we're here to look at. Now, if you're new to the channel, I am someone who looks the long-term and I focus on long-term metrics. I don't care about the, everybody cares so much about day-to-day -day data. What's going on today? Oh, things are good today. What about tomorrow? Oh my God, things are bad tomorrow. No. Guys, in this chart of history, how many things were good and bad over long periods of time? Tens and tens of millions, hundreds of millions of data points. The question is, if you paid a cheap price for stocks, you probably did pretty well. And guess what, guys? The other thing is, the story being told here, here, and here were not good stories. They were not good stories. Go back and Google financial news from 2000, March 2020 to March of 2009, and it's about June of 2003. Go Google it. Let me know how good the world looked back then. It wasn't good, and that's when you're going to get the best deals. So, how do you avoid falling for the trap of the media's ability to have the news follow where stocks are going. It's not the other way around. If a stock is up or the stock market's up, the news is going to be why it's up. If the stocks are down, the news is going to be why it's down. The joke we have in the office is when the market's up, my brother will text me and say, what BS news is out there to justify this? Yeah, he's exactly right. It's the people who have the ability to stay calm during good and bad times, not just bad times, good times as well. And to sit there and not chase returns and to not bail when you could have an opportunity for a good buying time. That's the hard part. And that's what we're here to talk about in this channel. So I have my stock market to GDP ratio that's based on the S&P. I won't get into the math of how I do it, but this goes back to 1929 and the ending quarter GDP value for those time, those, all those 360 some, 370 some quarters. I put them all in here and I took averages. So first off, this does not include dividends, but over the next, uh, the average 10 year return 
Rolling 10-year return on the S&P is about 6.6%. Makes sense. Because the historical average for dividends is about 3.5% after the last 30 years of very low dividend yield. So you're getting about a 9 or 10% return, which is about average. Imagine how good it'll feel to see markets falling and not have a worry in the world. Imagine how good it'll feel to have financial peace of mind. Imagine how great it'll feel to be able to understand how to read financial statements and impress all your friends when you're able to buy stocks based on facts and not emotions like they do. This is exactly what our software will help you learn and understand. For a little over $1 a day, you could have access to the same exact software that I use in our videos and that I use every single day for my own private investment decisions. It is beyond easy to use. And if you don't like it in the first 30 days, email us 100% money back guarantee, no questions asked. Stop worrying about your retirement and future and start planning for it. So begin right now at everythingmoney.com and start planning for your future confidently today, right here, right now. Now going back in history, when you're overvalued, the average return is about 2.3% a year for the next 10 years. So about a third, almost a third, two thirds less, about a third of the actual average. When it's undervalued, the average is 9.3. So about 50% more than this one. Now here's another interesting part. The more and more you get overvalued, your returns get worse. Makes sense, right? And the more undervalued you are, the returns get better. Makes sense. As, return, as you pay less, your returns go up. As you pay more, your returns go down. If I was going to give you $100 10 years from now, and you paid me $100 today for it, that's a 0% return. If you paid me $10 today, that's a 900% return. Look at that math, by the way. That is the difference in return. The, the companies in the U.S. is going to do what it's going to do. The less you pay for that growth, the better you're going to do. That's the key there, okay? Now, where do we currently stand? Well, as of today... March 6, 2023's close, the S&P is 66.2% overvalued. That's higher than here. According to this and according to history, the S&P will probably be lower 10 years from now than it is today. And that might be a very, very hard pill for people to swallow. Could it happen? Probably more likely than not. Could it be avoided? Absolutely. If we have 10% inflation for the next 10 years, every single year, 10%, this probably will not happen. It'll probably be better than that. You might think that's crazy, but GDP will skyrocket with inflation and it'll make the, the current S&P levels much easier to understand and much easier to accept. Now, when was the last time we were this bad? Well, here's the interesting part. 2000 was a tech bubble. 2000, people think, oh my God, that was the worst time in history. The peak was 56.9% overvalued. We're currently worse than that, than the peak of the tech bubble. I repeat, we're currently worse than that. Now, there are going to be comments below. Well, Paul, we're more service-oriented, higher profit margins, makes less sense. I got gotcha. you. And I agree with that. I do wonder about that all the time. There are other areas, there are other data points out there that say, suggest that we're only 25 or 30% overvalued, which is still a lot. That is still a lot, but it's a lot better than 66%. But let's go pull up a metric that I love that, that, that factors in that all it cares about is earnings. So it doesn't matter how it was earned. It's just earnings in general. This is the 10-year cyclically adjusted P.E. ratio going back to 1871. What does this mean? What it does is it takes the last 10 years of earnings of the S&P and it brings it to today's dollars using inflation. And then it divides the market cap by that average earnings. We are currently at 29.4. Look at history. The average is 17. Are we over or undervalued? We've only been overvalued a few times. And guess what? Great Depression. How did we do for the next 20 years? Okay, fine. 1966, the S&P was at 110. 1982, it was 107. Remember, this is, a, this is an PE multiple. It's not where the stock market was. The stock market was flat for, for, for how many years? Look at this. S&P was 1465. It didn't, it didn't break 1465 again until, let's look at our data. It took till 2007 to beat that number again. And guess what? That's when we had another crash. And it took another five more years to hit that level one more time. So from 2000 to 2012, the S&P did absolutely nothing. Zero gains except for dividends. That's all you would have made. 
Valuations drive the long-term results in the market. The hard part about valuations is for values to, valuations to get better, stock prices have to go down. When stock prices go down, the media tells you how the world is falling apart. When the world feels like it's falling apart, what are you doing? Don't be the person that sells. Brainwash yourself. Now, when I say brainwash yourself, this is the reason I do these videos over and over. This is the reason I read the same books over and over. This is the reason I listen to the same podcasts over and over. This is the reason that even when I do watch a video, which is very rare, I watch the same videos over and over. I listen to the people that all say the same thing who are the best investors of all time. It's about repeating over and over the things that make sense. When the world feels like it's going to fall apart, it's not falling apart. Just like when the world feels like it can't get any, that it'll never get worse, it will get worse. We have cycles. Death, taxes, and cycles. Those are the three guarantees I give you in this world. Things will never be great forever. Things will never be bad forever. And for the S&P 500 to go to zero, you won't even be worried about your 401k if it went to zero. There would be a complete Armageddon. It ain't gonna happen. So, you as an investor... When things get worse, which they are likely to get worse in the stock market, when I hear people say, oh my God, there's gonna be, it's going to be so bad. We're going to go down another 20%. Guys, I think it's going to be way worse than that. Does that mean that it will happen? No. But I just look at history going, why would it be any different this time? The four most dangerous words in, the, in investing is it's different this time. Why would we go from 66.2% overvalued to stable for a long period of time? We have to get to undervalued at some point. Have to, even if you don't believe this metric, the 10 year cyclically adjusted PE, the average is literally 17.0 going back to 1871. We have to get below there for us to get below there. Now it's not going to fall by almost 50%, probably 40% from there. I just believe what Warren Buffett says that the stock market to GDP ratio is at any given time, the most reliable metric because as companies earn more money, GDP will grow faster. So that'll account for that earnings growth potential that makes this ratio, people say, not, not, attribute, uh, not consistent with today's results. And I don't agree with that. But look at the cyclically adjusted PE ratio. It's going to be difficult for a while, but that's okay. You know why? Because this is what happens. Stocks go like this, but the price of stock values go like that, but the prices go like that. And your job is to buy all along the way. You're going to overpay, you're going to underpay, but overall, you're going to pay this. And you're going to beat 95% of mutual fund managers over long periods of time at a much lower cost. This is what I want you to learn from here. So there are two things I want you to do. I want you to subscribe to the channel. And two, I want you to share this with somebody else who's worried about the market. This should help them feel better about the market. It will get better. And we were the people saying the market was too crazy. We still say that. And in the future, we'll be the ones saying this is a great time to buy. Don't be worried. Thank you for your time.